Hello, good afternoon. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, rubrics and the usefulness of rubrics for both uh, faculty, teachers, as well as students. Of course, rubrics are used. Why do, are they used? Actually, when are they used? Well, they are used to achieve a certain a target. For example, let's say, for example, the students wants to learn about terminology. Uh, in a certain topic, let's say legal terminology or medical terminology. Um, so uh, this is one of the uh, targets of a course, for example. So what happens is that what we do is we have to put, we have to give them the information and then after that we have to ask them, assess the actual uh, learning process. Actually, uh, we need to use a method to, in order to assess their uh, the quality of their work, whether they've, le they've learned anything or they haven't learned uh, from the actual course. So what we do is we put give them some sort of what's called um, uh, an assessment method uh, used, which is like a product, like an essay, paper, report, a portfolio, a thesis. Or we can ask them for something more practical to apply, uh, like for example, why the translating uh, let's see if they can actually use these terminology in the translation and use these uh, terms that they are learning. So these are really the main things that we do that. When we do that, we need to actually then, uh, we have to score, we have to put a score on these or assign uh, points based on accurate answers. Um, in um, When we assign points on uh, for for a performance or for product, i.e. for an essay for um, or for a translation, we need to have a rubric which will uh, be good for testing. The rubric, what is a rubric? It's actually a scoring guide. It is, it is a set of clear expectations which each teacher has got, okay, with all levels of uh, level score points described and defined to the students to tell them what uh, how they will be uh, marked um, the idea behind the rubric is that or the benefit of it is that it is a consistent judgment or increases the consistent judgment uh, among teachers and students um, and this way it reduces the subjectivity of judgment and reliability of the assessment especially if there's a group of stu uh, teachers who are teaching the same course um, and so there are different sections in the same course so it assists both teachers and students uh, to focus on what is significant and highly valued in a topic. For example, we always, for in, in terminology, if they are translating and we are focusing on terminology and terms, we can give some grades on each term they use. And that way we are highlighting what is significant and it's what is of a high, high value in the actual uh, translation that they are doing. And that is one of the ways why we are doing uh, these, uh, this rubric. Why do we need to use rubrics? Uh, this is, um, of course, we have the learning outcomes, which is, uh, there is a relationship between outcomes and assessment and scoring methods. Learning outcomes is, we know that it's knowledge, skills, competencies, but then there is the assessment methods, which as, as I said before, product or performance. Product, meaning that they will produce an essay. Students need to produce an essay or a paper or a thesis or etc. And um, uh, or performance, where they have to do an experiment or translation or presentation, and you need to check on that translation and, 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 uh, and the terminology used there. And then after, of course, after learning outcomes, which we have just said, um, there is the assessment, uh, method assessment, at, uh, or assessment method. There is also the scoring method, and that will be the results or the grades, or the, uh, and this requires um, a rubric uh, to show the correct answer for points. Um, uh, Rubric-based points uh, for essays and presentations, i.e., uh, what do we put for certain parts of the um, of the essay for whatever reason, organization, formatting, um, uh, terminology, language, grammar, uh, errors, uh, syntactic errors, uh, meaning related errors, lexical errors, and so on and so forth. So this is really one of the things that we usually concentrate upon. Um, so the learning, pro well, really at the core of this 
on the method, on the assessment method, the core of it is the learning outcome. Once we know what the learning outcome, then we know how to, because the learning outcome, uh, outcome actually drives assessment method. And the assessment method, of course, drives uh, the scoring method. And the scoring method requires, uh, by uh, needs or requires rubrics, so that you can actually then uh, be a little bit, appear uh, more objective in your uh, assessment. Um, so that's really the situation there. Now, moving on to the types of rubrics that are used, there is holistic and analytic, as opposed to analytic, uh, um, generic as opposed to task specific or developmental. There are also checklists and rating uh, scales, which are uh, we can look at as well. Holistic rubric is a rubric, it's a single rubric that incorporates all performance criteria gives a single score or rating for an entire product or uh, performance. Um, and the rating is based on an overall impression of uh, the student's work. And it is used in, uh, for uh, summative uh, assessment. Summative assessment means you are giving them a grade, um, as opposed to formative assessment, which is um, gradeless, or you don't use any grades, it just gives you an idea of uh, what the class is like. In the holistic, when you're assessing, you're assessing the ability of writing, for example, uh, which is based on three different things, perhaps the ideas, the organization, or the words, or the terms. So, for example, in level three, it will be for students who meet all the criteria. They, their ideas are good uh, and well expressed, uh, their organization of the ideas is well, and the words, word choice is quite appropriate. And that will be level three the highest uh, of that. And the students need to meet these all, 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 all criteria. Uh, if the students have met uh, and reached the second level, and the second level will be meeting two criteria. For example, ideas are well expressed and organization is good, but the terminology is not appropriate. Or one of the three, like either the ideas or the organization or the terms and the words, uh, is uh, not appropriate. In level one, which you give level one to students who are meeting none of the criteria above. So in other words, they don't actually, their ideas are not clearly expressed. The organization of the ideas is not uh, well uh, d done and um, the terminology is inappropriate. So according to the, of course, to the holistic uh, uh, rubric, uh, students get only one score, either level one, level two, level three. Level three will have all the three criteria. Uh, level two will have two criteria, but level one has got no criteria whatsoever. Uh, and that's how you can tell that the class has got uh, the level of the class as a whole. And there is the other uh, one, uh, as opposed to holistic, which is called analytic. The analytic one is more uh, specialized, more specific, let's say. Uh, because it actually measures or uh, yeah, know, you know about each uh, level uh, more in details. For example, you know about the ideas, whether they are level one, level two, level three. You can make ideas level one, level two, level three. In other words, there are two of the ideas or three of the ideas are expressed well, or two of the ideas expressed well, or one of the ideas expressed well. So you give one level to the ideas or two or three for each student. And um, for the organization, you also do one, two, three levels as well. And for the uh, word choice you do, or terminology, you do one, two, three levels. And this kind of, um, uh, it's detailed and it shows the strengths and weaknesses of the students here. And it's very important for the students to know this as well. It's not really just only for teachers to know this, but students need to be aware that the teacher is actually going to mark them on the ideas, level one, two, and three, and on the organization of their work, one, level one, two, and three, and on their uh, work choice as well. But the, this kind of assessment can be a formative one. So we're moving on to uh, these level one and two and three. Of course, you can call them acceptable for number, level three, partial, partially acceptable for level two, and level one, not acceptable. Uh, due to uh, poor uh, performance. Of course, partially acceptable means they got good performance and acceptable, that's level three, which is uh, excellent performance. And that's what you 
are actually uh, be merit, uh, you know, uh, uh, assessing them or scoring uh, in terms of scoring. Holistic uh, re uh, rubric actually gives you very quickly a good uh, snapshot of of the quality of your uh, of the achievements of your students. And you know that how many of them are level three and how many of them are level two and level one. Um, uh, it's quite uh, cost effective in that it is. Uh, it's not going to cost. Uh, it's not going to take a long time to do in terms of time and uh, effort. And you will have a large number of responses from students. And it's useful because it gives you only uh, one single score uh, in this kind of assessment. Whereas in the uh, also, but the, this, uh, the demerits or the disadvantages of holistic one is that it doesn't give you very detailed uh, feedback on the students and their performance and how they are doing. The, uh, for, for example, uh, for example, let's say level two um, students might be doing well in level one uh, in in, um, in the first criteria and the third criteria, but not the second criteria. Uh, uh, another student will be level two as well. Uh, even though they haven't scored in the same way as in level, uh, criteria 1 and criteria 3, but in criteria 2 and criteria 3. And therefore, um, it's not really exact the kind of reading uh, that you get about your students, uh, about their weaknesses and strengths in terms of the product they've given you, the essay, or the performance. Um, uh, for, so this is really for the uh, holistic. Um, uh, for the um, analytic is, is more detailed and it's useful for judging the more complex uh, performance uh, and products involving various uh, important dimensions and that's why you put three levels for each uh, particular uh, criterion that you are using. Um, also it provides a very detailed uh, feedback to the students uh, when they see it on the blackboard, uh, showing their strengths and weaknesses so they know how to do that. And also, if they have the rubric, uh, they themselves will know how to score high marks because they know that the teacher is going to score, um, uh, put a high mark on um, a good performance or be because of mentioning all the terminology or because of uh, the organization of the whole uh, essay is good or the translation is uh, very clear and communicative and so on. So you're assessing uh, here the students to understand better the quality of their work and they themselves before they submit the assignments they will know that they are doing well or they will get a good grade or not um, uh, before the teacher is actually uh, you know uh, correcting or uh, before the teacher is actually uh, assessing their work and giving them a score. Um, with regards to generic uh, rubric that can be for multitasks. Uh, across similar uh, performances, like for example, if you are going to do translation, you can uh, put a rubric for translation saying uh, errors in grammar, errors in syntax will be taken like 20%, uh, whereas um, uh, errors relating to, to the meaning are going to, or accuracy, mistranslation, missing translations will have a much higher weighting, uh, i.e. 70% of the, of the mark will be on that. Um, and that's the, really the goal, is to help students see what quality uh, looks like across uh, different uh, similar tasks in translating legal translation and medical and, and, and uh, commercial and so on. So students will not be able to do exactly the same, well, will not all be doing exactly the same task. That's the thing. You can do that across over uh, courses, various courses. Uh, skills are being assessed are quite complex and generalized and they can uh, and, and they are generalized across tasks and that is really a very good uh, way of uh, there is also task specific rubric which is for a specific technique for example if you are doing something it can only be used for a single task of course this kind of rubric it has its own rubric which you create which is useful when the teacher wants to know whether the students have learned how to carry out a specific task and perform a specific skill or uh, produce a particular product and also um, to check if they have mentioned certain uh, particular facts equations or methods or procedures which they are trying to uh, do there is the developmental uh, rubric which is the last one of the group 
Uh, and this one, it's usually used several times to uh, examine changes over a period of time. For example, at the beginning of the course, we'll give the students the uh, test, and then at the end of the course, or in the middle of the course, and the end of the course, and we'll see how they develop their skills and their translation skills, and you will see if they are doing better or not. And this is really useful for students and teachers as well, because it shows the students will learn, um, like for example, in one of the courses at the very beginning, the students were doing presentations and doing um, analytical work, and it's noticed, I've noticed that they were not doing very well at the very beginning of the course. Of course, they were worried about it, but by the end of the course, they realized that uh, when, they, when I did another, asked them to do another presentation for another analytical uh, task, they have actually found that they have actually improved quite dramatically and that was reflected also in the score they have reached uh, or achieved at the very end of the course, whereas at the very beginning of the course the score was below and they were a bit concerned about that. Thank you.